Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Polkadot and the fact that the dot train continues. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find the link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So now we're looking at a $36 dot. We're, we're basically just systematically moving up, okay? We have on here the 20-day SMA and the 21-day EMA. These are the two main areas of short term of short term support that we like to discuss in a bull market you can did you catch your ticket here here we have a lot of stops along the way um, and most recently we've had more of a, of a longer stop uh, from the you know, late february over the last several weeks okay so dot has been more or less hugging this line for a while and what we're sort of hoping for what i'm hoping for is to see it systematically bounce off of this level as long as Bitcoin stays bullish, right? Bitcoin stays bullish, or at least, you know, not not overly bearish, then I'm, I'm more or less waiting and anticipating a move off of this level. Okay, so the prior all-time high is around $42. Okay, so we know we had a wick up to around $42 or so, approaching $43. So until we get to that point, we are still more or less just playing in the sandbox to some degree. Now, $42 dot would also pull it up the ranking sum. You know, it has fallen back down slightly, but it's still doing relatively well. Now, to get to a $43 dot, so for dot to go back into price discovery mode from the current valuation, we would need it to go up by approximately 18 or 19%. But again, what's more important than looking at the USD valuation, as always, right, is to look at its Bitcoin valuation and its Ether valuation. Okay, so the Bitcoin valuation, as we, you know, we discussed, it was moving down in Q4. We said this is likely to happen if it's going to emulate what Ethereum did, which it did. And then in January, it should move up which it has done and then broke through in February, exactly like the Ether Bitcoin valuation did, if I can find that. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna quickly pull up the Ether Bitcoin valuation so we, can, so we can just quickly make that same comparison because I know I've showed it before, but we always get new people uh, watching, watching the show here. So generally bleed in Q4, back up in January, break through in February. Now, so far, DOT has sort of gotten held up a little bit. And I think the reason is because Bitcoin has, has remained somewhat in price discovery mode over the last few weeks, going back above $58,000 and going to over $61,000 just a few days ago. And so the dot Bitcoin valuation has somewhat suffered. But it will be interesting to see if that our prior, if sort of this resistance area that we had in the past ultimately is something we can bounce off of and continue higher. We know that Ethereum continued higher, but it didn't really look back. Now, I did say that I don't think that DOT will put in quite the same type of return against Bitcoin that Ethereum did because Ethereum's market cap was in like the tens of millions when this move happened. And DOT's is already in the tens of billions. So we're talking about three orders of magnitude difference in terms of the market capitalization of Ethereum back then as compared to Polkadot today. Uh, but with that said, we, we can speculate on, on what might happen, right? We can speculate we see that Ethereum moved up a modest 400%. Okay, so even if DOT were to not move up a, you know, a modest 400%, let's say it moved up 100% from the current valuation. Well, the current valuation in terms of the Satoshi value is around 61,000 Satoshis. So a 100% move up would put it at over 124,000 Satoshis, which by the way, at the valuation of Bitcoin were to stay constant and DOT Bitcoin went up 100%, we would be looking closer to a $70 DOT. Okay, so $70 DOT, while it might seem crazy, I don't think it's necessarily that crazy if the market stays bullish, right? I mean, obviously, there's a huge caveat. Um, it, everything relies on Bitcoin. Uh, a Bitcoin capitulation will send most everything falling very, very quickly. So that's the risk you take, okay? you have, There's units of risk. You bite off as many units of risk as you want. You take profits when you can. And then when the market drops back down, you then live through that risk that you were taking, you experience it, and then you're like, oh, okay, that, that was the downside risk. No, the downside risk, the downside risk, of course, is always, is Bitcoin going to continue higher? Is it going to go sideways, which would be relatively bullish for altcoins, or is it going to start coming back down, which would make it likely very difficult for altcoins to rally? So here we are, a 100% move could put DOT at, at 70 bucks. A 200% move, with a constant Bitcoin 
would put it, you know, closer to $100 or so. So we know, we know that these things are theoretically possible as long as Bitcoin stays relatively bullish. The question is, will that happen? And remember, this is not a daily game. It's not a weekly game. I mean, Bitcoin could drop down to $50,000, which would cause DOT to probably drop down to like $30 or something. It doesn't mean that it, it can't sort of pick itself back up by, by its bootstraps and continue on. So remember, this is a marathon, not a race. We need to take it one step at a time, right? I mean, think about how long, how far we've come so far. Everyone, a lot of people get disenfranchised with quote unquote sideways movement. I think a lot of people forget that DOT was $3 a few months ago. I mean, it was $3. Now we're looking, now we're, we're I mean, we're, we're, we're looking here at a, at a 61,000 Satoshi DOT in terms of the Bitcoin valuation and a $36 DOT in terms of its USD valuation. So it still looks relatively good to me. And, you know, ADA has recently pumped up a lot. Obviously, the narrative, ADA, Polkadot. I mean, I know they're not the same project by any means, but you, you buy the idea that the narrative is similar. Okay, Ethereum fees are going crazy. What's an alternative? And there ADA is, and there Polkadot is. And, and then you, you sort of run that narrative as long as you can until profits probably bleed back in into, into Ethereum. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on DOT. Speaking of Ethereum, what's the DOT Ether valuation? I think that's one to take a look at because as we've always said, you know, we're pragmatic. If an altcoin starts not performing, you cut it, right? You don't marry an altcoin, we don't care. The purpose is to make money. I don't really care at the end of the day, to be completely honest about any altcoin. Um, I wanna make money on them and that's more or less as far as it goes. So, DOT Ether, can we justify holding DOT? Is it outperforming Ether? That's the question, right? It's not a complicated question. It's just the question you have to ask. And since January, it's outperformed it by a modest 180%. Even from launch, if we went to the top of the wick here, it still has outperformed it by about 13%. So DOT is still looking good, okay? It's still outperforming Ether. I own way more Ether than Polkadot. I own more, way more Ether than, than ADA. But... I do hold projects like Polkadot and ADA because I expect higher returns, but I'm also taking on more units of risk. Therefore, if the market dumps, I would expect Polkadot and ADA to probably take a harder hit than Ethereum. This would be my speculation. Obviously, it doesn't always work out exactly be like it doesn't always work out exactly in that way, but that is what I would expect would be a Bitcoin capitulation would cause coins like ADA and Polkadot to bleed more than Ethereum. So you're sort of you're sort of like, you know, running along that line of you're you're trying to get those higher profits, which we want, but you also, you know, going all in on a single project can be detrimental if that project were to have a major 30, 40, 50, 60 percent pullback. And remember, during the last cycle, Ethereum had several 60, 50, 60 percent pullbacks. So we know it's possible. Uh, I would expect altcoins to sort of do the same thing this market cycle, though this cycle is a lot different so far than the last one. So we'll take it one step at a time. We'll see if DOT can go, you know, can, can make a rally above $42. Obviously, the, the main target above 42 would be a $50 DOT. But in terms of looking at, say, levels of um, valuation against Bitcoin, if we did see it continue to emulate at all what Ethereum did in 2015, 2016, we may expect it to go up um, a, a decent amount more before having a more sustained correction against Bitcoin. Okay, so we'll take this one step at a time. If you guys like the content, by the way, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Make sure you check out the altcoin season sale. You can find a link to that in the description below as well. You get access to the weekly reports and videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, the Into the Cryptoverse app, the premium only live streams, and more. Make sure you guys check it out before the prices go up. That'll wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Bye.